Now this episode was meant to be a gear review, but it's ended up being more of a back to basics talking about using muslin as a diffuser. So if you want to skip directly to the gear review, just go straight to the second chapter. Hi everybody and thank you again for watching another episode of Gaffer and Gear. In today's episode we're going to take a look at some products sent in to me from Cinemilled. These are the Cine Rags Unbleached and Bleached Muslins. So these are made for the Aperture Light Dome 2, the Aperture Light Dome 3 and the Aperture Light Dome 150. These are quality diffusers made in the USA. Now I'm just going to give you my take on the muslin material in case you've never used it before. So it's its own unique thing, it's not the same as other diffusers. Now I'm going to compare it to the milky white artificial diffuser that comes with these. So this is the denser diffuser. So the first thing you need to know about the muslin is it does eat up a bit more light levels. So if you're using the unbleached muslin here which has this beautiful colour to it, you're going to get about 67% the light level that you would have got through this diffuser. And if you're using the bleached muslin, which is the white version, you're going to get about 80% of the light level that you would have got through this diffuser. Okay, so here's the difference. Even though it's a denser diffuser and you're losing a bit more light level, it doesn't necessarily make it a softer diffuser. It's actually a bit of a mix of hard and soft together because you can see through the weave. So I'm just going to fire this one up so you can see what I'm talking about inside it. So you can see the light source here. Okay, now that's a small light source. So that's going to give us um, uh, uh, harder shadow qualities. And on the front, we've got our diffuser here, which is a broader light source. So that's going to give us softer shadow qualities. So we've got a mix of hard, the small light source in here, and we've got a mixture of soft together. Now where this is different to say using a grid cloth is because this is a, a denser material, even though we're seeing through the weave, it does fill in the shadows a bit better like a denser material would. So if I get on a, a bit of an angle here, you can see some shadow contours in the side of my face. Even though the side of my face is definitely within the scope of the wider uh, front surface of the of the dome. All right, so that's what I really like about this sort of diffuser is a grid cloth. This would be going to Blackmore, but with the, um, the muslin, it fills it in a little bit more. Now, for example, these are the shadows that you get with the lightest diffusion that is supplied with the domes. And with everything at the same distance, these are the shadows that you get with the muslin. As you can see when I scroll between the two, the muslin shadows are filled in quite a bit more. But if you take a real close look at the shadows with the muslin diffuser, you can see that the contours in the shadows are still there. You can make out my thumb and you can make out all my fingers. Now in this photo, I moved the light one meter further back just to emphasize and make it more clear what I'm talking about. Now where this diffusion is very different for me is usually if I'm using a lighter material, like a lighter grid cloth that gives us um, a hard light source plus a soft light source combined, the reason I'm usually doing that is because I need more light level. It's not actually because I want to mix hard and soft together. It's, but you know, this is very different. We've got our hard and soft mixed together, but we don't have as much light level. So where would I use this creatively? So let's imagine a scenario where uh, we're going to film a model and that model has the most beautiful bone structure. Okay, beautiful jawline. She's got beautiful cheek lines. Okay, so. If you take a model like that and you just wrap her in the densest uh, diffusion that you've got, the no shadows, then you could lose all that shape and contour on her face. So quite often you hear people talk about the texture of a diffusion. They're not necessarily talking about the texture of the actual material. They might be talking about the texture of the light that you get on the subject. Now obviously the difference between the bleached and the unbleached is the color. So with the unbleached, it does warm up the CCT quite a bit, but it's not like sticking on a CTO gel or just dialing in a lower Kelvin. It has this sort of uh, buttery, creamy uh, color added into it. And where I really like using this, uh, particularly as a bounce material, is if, say, we're shooting somewhere like a forest where there's no artificial surfaces. So you don't get any white light bouncing off the ground in a forest. And, and if you try to do that, it does look very artificial. So where I like using this is uh, if we're in 
older environments, you know, uh, older buildings where you've got a lot of exposed brick, a lot of wooden floorboards. You know, introducing a purely white light source really looks out of place. And this stuff just really seems to fit in. Okay, now let's get into the review side of things and straight up disclaimer, Cinemild did send me these. So I've got four of them and I do get to keep them. So that's why at the start of the episode, it comes up with contains paid promotion. All right, so this is really gonna be a very quick review because I can't fault them. The material is fantastic. The stitching is absolutely on point. Things are overlapped where they need to be. You get the maximum amount of Velcro that you can have and still have room for the accessory. Um, I really can't fault them. I am genuinely surprised at the price point though. So I'm guessing they're eating a little bit into their profit margins here because at the end of the day, this is made for an Aperture product. So people who are buying Aperture domes aren't the sort of people who are used to paying top dollar. So if you wanna buy these, go to cinemilled.com, click on the main menu, go down to lighting accessories and they will appear on the front page. Let's finish off the review with some spectrometer readings and these readings were taken with the smaller dome with a 1200D on the back at a distance of three meters. See you on the next episode. Don't forget to click like and subscribe.